What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Block Hash podcast. Today, I have on the uh, growth officer, Philip, here to talk about cross finance, a next generation digital ecosystem for crypto banking and cutting edge payment solutions. Philip, welcome to the show, man. How are you doing today? So far, so good. Thank you very much for having me. Excited to, to have a great chat. Let's do an introduction. I'm sure people would love to know a little bit about yourself. Um, you know, what was your you know, your journey, what has that kind of been like? What kind of led you into uh, the tech space and, and blockchain space today and, you know, prior running up to CrossFi? Yeah, great question. So my career uh, has basically been, I would say, in a nutshell, kind of developing growth for emerging industries. And so throughout my career, I've kind of worked uh, in everything from, uh, 3D printing to augmented reality, virtual reality to AI and, and kind of everything in between. So, you know, my goal as a marketer is to find an emerging industry, something that hasn't quite made its way into society yet, and to work with the best companies in those industries to create growth loops and growth mechanisms for their products that help them acquire users, engage those users, monetize them, and ultimately turn them into ambassadors. So basically creating a flywheel that helps these businesses grow. And so, you know, I would say thus far, I've been fortunate enough to to have a pretty successful uh, career trajectory, uh, worked in the 3D printing space with an exit, um, a company called Shapeways, uh, which went public. And then I moved over into AR VR, uh, working with a company called Sketchfab that got acquired by Epic Games. And then from there, I would say, you know, I've spent a lot of time just sort of diving into crypto as an enthusiast, as an investor, you know, early Bitcoin, early Ethereum, um, just something I've always been interested in because I've, I found that it really reflects a potential alternative to the traditional finance ecosystem, which I think I'm, I'm always looking to alternatives for existing ecosystems. And so, um, you know, through my work and kind of combining my passion for crypto with kind of what I was doing for a living, I managed to uh, very early on work with a company called Decentraland, which I think some folks are, you know, uh, crypto natives are familiar with. Uh, I was one of the first marketing advisors to a company called Coinlist, helped them build up their their marketing presence and, um, you know, help them with, with some marketing. And then basically from there, I mean, it's been... It's been a hell of a journey. I've worked with dozens of companies in the crypto space. I've worked with small fledgling startups. I've worked with uh, with Binance. I spent a couple of years at Binance running growth for their DeFi portfolio. So, I mean, for me, you know, I've kind of run the gamut uh, within the crypto industry of, you know, what's out there, how is it being built, how is it being marketed, how is it how is it generally being, you know, kind of sold to the you know, uh, user audience at large. And so, you know, I think that's, that's kind of been my journey thus far. And, and last but not least, I, uh, joined forces with CrossFi, who I think are, are definitely pushing the envelope on some really innovative products and, and just a general, uh, innovative ecosystem. And yeah, I think, you know, for me, that is, that is, uh, kind of where I'm at in my journey. Nice, man. Seems like you've been around the block. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Um, yeah, that's awesome with the central land, everything. I definitely got, you know, my startup in the space, very similar, uh, with uh, crypto voxels. So I was kind of in that metaverse ecosystem for a while, investing in virtual real estate and whatnot. Um, but no, that's really cool. And then, you know, looking at cross finance, was there anything in particular that kind of, you know, drew you in to be a part of that? Um, did you know the team prior, you know, was that like a, a typical hire or what was kind of like the inception point for you? There's no typical inception point in this industry. It's a, it's all just, you know, uh, I would say the the sort of crux of what built the initial relationship was kind of um, making contact with the founder Alexander. Um, you know, just always looking to connect with uh, with smart people in the space, people that have done interesting things previously in their careers, and people that are kind of working on. Uh, on cool products and you're just supposed to have a, a quick chat, you know, quick 30 minutes just to talk about kind of where they were at. Maybe, maybe there was some advice that I can give. Ended up chatting for three or four hours, just really talking about everything that has been done up to that point, talking about, you know, kind of what the mission is, what all of the different mechanisms are that would help accomplish the mission. And, you know, I think to me, a couple of things stood out. One is that 
you know, as as a human, uh, very, very smart human, which I always respect and appreciate uh, as a team. I think it's superstar team from all kinds of different, you know, very, very successful track record backgrounds, which for me, again, extremely important. Get some really smart people in a room together, give them a common goal and, and you'll see, you know, you'll see magic happen. And then last but not least, I think of all of the different projects that I've sort of encountered in the crypto space, CrossFi is the one that actually seems to be the most capable of potentially delivering on the promise that they uh, they are making, you know, and so everything from kind of the L1 ecosystem that was built to support the payment product all the way up to the actual flagship payment product that we've been working on for the last five years. I mean, you know, the the fundamentals that support the actual product are so strong that I think this actually has the chance to become, I would say, one of the most revolutionary technologies that I've personally been a part of in the crypto space. What would you say is, you know, kind of the overarching goal? Uh, what void in the market is it trying to fill? Uh, what's the grandiose vision behind it? Like, what do you guys want to achieve? Yeah, great question. So, I mean, <clears throat> as generic as it may sound, CrossFi is real main goal is is crypto mass adoption into society and i think you know breaking that goal down into kind of smaller you know more achievable parts it's you know building a a layer one blockchain to support you know kind of this revolutionary payments product building an ecosystem around that l1 blockchain because if if there's an l1 blockchain that could support scalable secure and fast payments then it obviously has the capability to support other kind of innovative sort of pushing the envelope, uh, DeFi type projects, GameFi projects, AI, DPIN, so on and so forth. And last but not least, and I think the piece that I am sort of most interested in and that got me really fascinated was the flagship payments product that we've built. So we have managed to build a fully non-custodial payments product that allows you to connect any popular Web3 wallet to the CrossFi app and then spend tokens from your Web3 wallet in the native currency of the geography that you're located in at any point of sale terminal with a flat fee, completely non-custodially and working directly with banks such that banks are interacting directly with our smart contracts and not going through some third party partner that, you know, may or may not, um, you know, be able to go down. And so, again, you can see how kind of breaking all of that out, you know, really that all comes together to help proliferate crypto into society, help proliferate, you know, Web3 payments, connect the dots between Web3 and traditional payments technology, and and just generally become that bridge that then serves to help onboard more people into the crypto space. And that also helps onboard the crypto world into real society, which I think it's, it's always been that bridge that we've been missing. And, and we're just trying to do our part in building it. Yeah, to kind of expand on that a little bit, you mentioned working directly with banks, right? And not having as many third parties in between. What kind of goes into setting up some of those partnerships? Like, are you working with, um, you know, smaller banks and kind of doing it at that level? Or do you have uh, larger banking partnerships um, with Crossfire? What can you kind of divulge in regards to how you guys are setting up that ecosystem? So some of the folks, like I said, you know, we've got a rock star team with extremely diverse backgrounds and, you know, basically coming from all around the Web3 space, the traditional payment space. Uh, some of the folks on our team have been so deeply embedded into the financial world for decades now that they've managed to really build up those networks, build up those relationships in order to I would say maybe even, you know, convince uh, convince larger banks to do things that they maybe otherwise would never have explored doing. Um, and so, you know, obviously there are sort of technical fundamentals that are requirements in order to participate in that space for us as a company. Um, but, you know, to your point, they are larger banking partners that we are working with. I'm not going to ruin the surprise. We've got some co-marketing campaigns planned with with our banking partners that, um, you know, we we are very excited about because, you know, in terms of mass adoption, right, what, what's a better way to get people to adopt a product than to uh, sort of work with, uh, you know, a marketing partner that's potentially got uh, tens of millions of customers, if not more. And so, 
and we do work with larger banks, which you know really helps with our distribution mechanism, but also really helps with our our compatibility mechanism. You know what makes us compatible with all of these different POS terminals around the world. What makes us compatible with all of these different geographies and compliant in those different geographies, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, it's really been. Uh, I would say, you know, over the last five years, it's really been a lot of product development, of course, but then also a lot of business development uh, in regards to making those relationships work and, and, you know, kind of figuring out a way to get us compliant, both technically and, you know, from a security perspective to be able to be that partner to those banks to provide this kind of service. Nice, man. And congrats. I know how hard it is to do that today, um, you know, and work with banks and build out those kind of rails. You know, looking at the non-custodial payment gateway, you know, it's incredibly fascinating. What are some of the um, mechanics behind it? I know you mentioned some of it, but also what are some use cases that kind of tie into it? Obviously, you know, there's probably, you know, direct ways to go to terminals and pay and, you know, you know make normal transactions and stuff like that for people. Yep. But do you have any use cases to date like that you can kind of highlight as an example? Yeah, I would say really our, our main use case, like you mentioned, is to enable people to transact in their daily lives the way that they would with, you know, traditional banking infrastructure. And I say this all the time, people like you and I, and I'm, I'm making an assumption here, but I think it's a proper assumption. People like you and I are very fortunate to be able to have access to traditional banking infrastructure. I mean, at this point, I go to the store and I really don't think about how I'm going to buy groceries or how I'm going to pay for gas or how I'm going to buy myself coffee. I just do it. You know, I can participate in the global economy, not only here at home, but when I travel anywhere in the world, you know, I've got a phone in my pocket, I've got a card in my wallet and I can buy anything from anywhere and, and sort of do so safely and securely and without having to think too much about it. When we look at the data, there are so many people, I would say like, you know, probably the majority of the world that is that is actually unbanked they do not have access to this kind of you know banking infrastructure and so when you think about not being able to participate in the global economy and as we move towards a cashless society these people genuinely have no options at this point they cannot buy goods and services from you know from i would say a, a large slew of, of vendors and providers and so you know, when we think about the major use cases for what we're building here at CrossFi, it really is enablement to participate in, in the global economy, into global financial infrastructure. And I would say, obviously, there are so many different other use cases that could be built on top of that, that I think for us are are always amazing and we, we love to see it. But but those are really edge cases as compared to kind of our main goal of, you know, enablement. And, and we continue to really deliver on that promise, not only to folks uh, in, you know, extremely developed countries such as here in the United States and in Europe, but but globally. And I think that that has really been a huge part of our mission. I think something that we're really excited to see is people in regions that, you know, really have never been fortunate enough to have access to traditional banking infrastructure using our products to make their lives better. Yeah, I feel you on that. I live in Colombia, so I'm very familiar with the issue. There's a lot of people here that are unbanked for various different reasons. One of them not having access to these kinds of, you know, traditional banking services and tools and whatnot, but at the same time, them just being really bad or really expensive or, you know, really corrupt in some areas too. So it's it's really good what you guys are doing. So I think it's going to really help open up some of those rails for a lot of people. And also, you know, within this space too, I see a lot of great tech being innovated here and there all over the place but why can't i go into starbucks and buy a coffee with crypto like it should be the first use case that you know comes out and that is really pioneered yet it's like i still can't quite do that except you know i probably can now with crossfi um but before you know that's always been like a foregone conclusion for whatever reason in this space yeah, absolutely. And, you know, to your point, I, I've spent a good portion of my life traveling around the world and, you know, sort of doing the digital nomad thing before it was it was cool. And I've spent quite a bit of time living all over Colombia, spent a few years living in Medellin, spent some time living in Mexico, you know, all over Europe. And I think the perspective that I managed to to get when I was traveling to all of these different places is 
finances are not created equally. Um, and, and I think understanding that and building towards, you know, sort of creating a level playing ground for everybody to be able to participate in the economy has, has become sort of a personal mission for myself. And, and CrossFi is one of the vehicles that uh, I've managed to, uh, to be fortunate enough to, to partner with to do that. Well, I'm looking forward to trying it out. So like looking at the CrossFi banking app itself, is that something that's out already today? So it is something that is very close to uh, to going into production. We actually recently launched our mainnet. And so kind of that was the first step to really, you know, being able to have the foundational infrastructure available to support kind of getting the app out into production. And so a very close follow up is our app going into production, being available in all of the major different app stores. And then, of course, kind of once that uh, once that becomes available, then we open up the floodgates to uh, people being able to order and create cards and kind of access our our infrastructure. Do you have any dates kind of earmarked for when that stuff is going to come out or is it on a public roadmap yet? Or are you still kind of working through the details? So I will say that Q4 is is going to be an exciting quarter for everybody that's been following along with our ecosystem. Don't want to announce uh, specific dates yet. Just, um, you know, for g- give ourselves a little bit of buffer room to to not be necessarily held accountable to a specific day. But Q4 has really been the quarter that we've been uh, building everything towards. And, and yeah. That's that's when a lot of these things are, are coming to fruition, starting with our main net launch, which was a long time coming, but is finally here. Uh, and, and again, very exciting. And, and of course, continuing with the flagship payment product, as well as some of these uh, really amazing partnerships that we've had on the developer side of, of folks building cool products on the CrossFi blockchain. And then also with the banking app, what are some standout features that you know, you think could change the way users really interact with finance, some things that might be really cool. Um, And, you know, just generally what they can expect by the time it comes out, some like basic stuff. So on the banking app itself, actually, we have focused to make it as simple as possible. And so the goal was to deliver a functional, simple, easy to use product that uh, wouldn't necessarily cloud the user experience with, you know, a ton of features and you know, in, in, in my experience working with consumer companies over the last you know decade or so, I've noticed that companies always try to jam pack their products with features, which I think ultimately actually detract from the main mechanism that they are trying to deliver to the market, the main promise that they are making to the consumer. And so, you know, as a user, I'm always looking for the quickest path from A to Z. You know, here is the thing that I'm trying to set out to achieve. And here is the ultimate outcome that is going to leave me satisfied, that is going to delight me. And so, what we've done in our banking app is actually shorten the trajectory from, you know, kind of point A to point Z uh, by just giving the bare minimum simple functionality of being able to connect your Web3 wallet, hold a certain amount of tokens, generate a physical card or a virtual card to make your transactions. And then, of course, all of the data layer around your transactions. So here are records of all your transactions here, are all of the different ways to filter that data, consolidate that data. And then we also have another app in our ecosystem, which is coming to market, which encompasses all of those innovative DeFi features, swaps, borrowing protocols, lending protocols, some of our partner products and so on. And so the idea was actually to separate those two products out. I think for us, it's extremely important to deliver to the users exactly what the users want without clouding that experience and being able to segment products to then communicate to those various segments of users differently and and to make sure that they're getting to kind of the intended use case the what i what i call the job that they hired the app for right if you hired this app to make payments then that is what this app is going to do if you hired this app however to you know do DeFi transactions then that is exactly what it's going to do and so that's why we've kind of segmented our ecosystem and and that's why we have multiple different products that kind of encompass the entire experience that makes sense less is more right i mean sometimes if you try and shove out everything into like one application or one use case and then it can be very overwhelming for an individual especially in this space because there's so many different things different nuances so that definitely makes a lot of sense 
And then that second application, what's that called and what are some of the focuses for that in particular? Yeah, so to your point, I mean, the I would say the biggest detractor from folks kind of, you know, mass adopting crypto has genuinely been sort of uncertainty, right? FUD, fear, uncertainty, doubt. When you see something that looks overwhelming, when you see something that is like just extremely complicated and seems to have too many features and too many possibilities, especially when it comes to financial transactions and when it comes to your money, you kind of almost create this fear of getting lost in the ecosystem and something happening to your money that you can't control. And I think that is that has been a huge detractor in our industry for, you know, folks launching these very complicated, uh, very complicated products. And so, you know, for us, so the cross finance app, the actual payment app um, encompasses the payment side. And then the X app, as we call it, encompasses the entire kind of DeFi suite. So within the X app, you can find uh, swap, you can find borrowing, you can find lending, you can find some of our DeFi, uh, DeFi partner products, uh, folks that have been building some really innovative stuff and pushing the envelope as it comes to RWA, synthetic assets, you know, different, different types of mechanisms that, that basically are, you know, kind of really pushing the envelope, as I said, on, on the DeFi space. And so that is all kind of encompassed and rolled into, into the X app. Awesome. And that's something that's available today as well. I remember seeing that on the website. Yeah. So you can interact with the, you know, X app ecosystem for sure. But as far as the sort of fully packaged app and, and kind of having everything in one place, again, something that we're working to, uh, to deliver to the popular app stores and, and kind of get that packaged up for mass consumption across all of the different avenues that that you can c consume apps. Awesome. Uh, the next thing I want to discuss is uh, security, because I know that that's obviously a top concern for a lot of people in the space today, especially after the stuff that's happened last few years. Or, you know, how does CrossFi ensure safety for users? Um, and then does it also use Tendermint? Because I saw that it used the Tendermint architecture, maybe for specific things. And how does that kind of play in? Like, what's its purpose? Absolutely. So security, I would say in any financial product is probably the fundamental base layer for um, building confidence uh, in, in your user base. And so, you know, the more secure that a financial product is, the more generally folks are inclined to um, to work with it and to give it a shot. And so we do leverage Tendermint indeed. But we also, I would say a huge part of our strategy has always been to put security first. And so working with third party auditing firms, making sure that we're compliant with all of our banking partners, security regulations, right, which are uh, <laughs> quite, quite extensive, you know, obviously, you can imagine working with banks directly, even down to recently, we've acquired our PCI DSS uh, security certification, which if you know about payment products, I mean, that is one of the, I would say, uh, flagship security certifications in the payments industry. It's not easy to get whatsoever and, and takes a lot of resources and, and efforts to acquire. And so, you know, we deemed it necessary to do that for our users and to give our banking partners the confidence that we are indeed the right partner for them and to give our users confidence that we are indeed the right platform for them. So, yeah, great question. Security is, is you know, one of the one of the main principles of, of kind of the work that we do and, and the products that we build. Awesome. Yeah, that's great to hear, man, too. It, it means a lot to a lot of people, especially, again, what's happened the last you know few years or so. It's been like, you know, a bit crazy in the space, to say the least. You know, looking ahead at your guys' roadmap, I know we kind of touched on a few things. You said exciting stuff will likely happen in Q4. Um, but what other things can you kind of divulge going into the new year, into 2025, uh, beyond the holiday season? whether it's in regards to X app or the banking app or something completely different, what, what do you want people to be aware of and what should they be excited for? So I think Q4 is definitely going to be a revolutionary quarter for, for CrossFi and for our ecosystem. We've spent the last five years basically building the ecosystem, the blockchain, the suite of products, the relationships that go into it, the, the flagship payment product. And so, you know, Q4 is kind of our, I would say, our huge explosion onto the market, you know, starting with the mainnet launch, then kind of progressing into our various product launches. 
Um, and I think beyond really one of the things that we've really been working on over the last uh, over the last couple of years is is building up partnerships and, and relationships within the industry with some of the leading protocols and leading products and platforms out there that you know are interested in coming onto the cross fi blockchain on building cool products on top of our infrastructure. And so very excited once we kind of roll out our you know, own flagship products, very excited to start making some of these major partnership announcements and, and rolling some of these products out there into the market and, you know, really just showing folks what we're not only capable of building, but what we're capable of hosting, which is, I think, extremely important for a robust ecosystem and for an L1 blockchain. And I think that is, that is definitely something that folks should expect to see coming out of us in the next, uh, you know, next six to 12 months. Exciting. Um, if you're a user and you want to start using XApp, you want to start you know, diving into the cross finance ecosystem, where would you have them start? The website? Uh, do you have communities, socials? Where do you want to direct people? I would say that probably the best place to start is our website. It's www.crossfi, C-R-O-S-S-F-I, not CrossFit, crossfi.org. That is the only official website. Do not click links from anywhere else. On there, you will find all of our official communities, all of our socials, all of our basically platforms where you choose to consume your content. And so please go to the website, you know, follow along wherever you choose to sort of get your news or consume content and then stay tuned for instructions and roll out and kind of, you know, calls to action from there. But yeah, website is, is absolutely a great place to start. Excellent. And then if there's a company out there, you know, maybe it's a bank, maybe it's, um, you know, another payment company, maybe it's someone that could collaborate or partner with you guys that might be looking for that. Is there a way for them to get in contact with you guys directly? Absolutely. Um, like I said, join our, you know, go to our website, join our discord community. Um, you can contact me directly. Uh, if you're on X at go Fillionaire. if you, uh, are on LinkedIn. You can find me on there as Fillionaire. So feel free to connect with me. Feel free to uh, go to the website and connect with us on any of our community channels, and we will absolutely guide you to the right place as it comes to, um, you know, the proper channels for partnerships and so on. Sounds great. We'll put all the links in the description for the episode below so everyone can find it uh, very easy and seamlessly. Philip, thank you so much for taking the time to come on today. This has been a really good conversation. I uh, learned a lot about the cross finance ecosystem. Very excited to try out the X app myself, um, as well as the banking app once that comes out. So do keep us posted. Uh, would love to kind of test those out and give you guys some feedback. And um, yeah, keep it up, man. You guys are doing great stuff. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me and, uh, and excited to, to work further. Likewise. We'll talk soon. Take care, man.